Welcome to another video review from AV Forums. I'm Phil Hinton, I'm the editor, and I have been since 2003. I'm also a fully trained and qualified THX and ISF calibrator with over 16 years of experience. In today's video, we're looking at the new 4K flagship LED LCD TV from Samsung, the Q90R. The review sample is a retail production unit supplied by Samsung UK, so let's jump straight into the review and look at the design. The Q90R is a well-built TV that has an extremely heavy base stand. It's probably the heaviest metal base stand we've ever seen on a modern TV, but it also serves a purpose and is nicely sculpted. It slots into a plastic mount which attaches to the TV set centrally and both are screwed together and once fitted the TV has a very sturdy base that is stable and attractive. The only connections to the rear of the Q90R are the One Connect connector and a thin wire. This fits just above the stand and there's a channel for the cable to hide and then slot into the side of the base so you have a cable free look from the front of the TV. Because there are no cables attached to the TV, it has a clean look that from the front has a small bezel around the edge and the image sits around 10mm to the side of this. However, the panel depth is much bigger than the super slim OLED screens out there and that's because this is a full array local dimming TV and it needs the space to place the backlight, hence the 1 inch thickness to the panel depth. The edge of the panel is covered in a brushed metal finish which looks good and gives the TV a premium feel and the rear of the set has a stripped metallic finish with heat extracting vents to the top. In the middle of the rear panel is the no gap wall mounting point and below this is the one connector and the stand. On a normal TV you will usually find all the connections around the back to one side of the panel. However, Samsung do things differently with their QLED TVs and there is just a one connector to the back of the set and a thin cable which leads out to the one connect box. This unit has all the power, Wi-Fi and connections for the TV in question. It can be hidden away which allows for a clean installation and less of a spaghetti junction look to your cabling if you were connecting sources directly to the TV. There are four HDMI 2.0B ports that accept 18 gigabits per second 4K 444 60p signals and compatibility for HDR10, HDR10+, and HLG high dynamic range formats. There is absolutely no support for Dolby Vision. While these are not HDMI 2.1 connectors, they do support many of the features you would expect from 2.1, such as low latency mode, 120 frames per second 4K with 420 chroma, FreeSync VRR and game switching mode. The only real functionality missing here is support for EARC. This could be added without HDMI 2.1, but for some reason Samsung doesn't yet see it as important. Also in the One Connect box are three USB inputs, one designed for HDD recording features along with a wired Ethernet port, optical audio out along with two satellite and one terrestrial antenna. Finally there's the One Connect port which takes the source signals and power to the TV. The One Connect box is a great idea and one we are really surprised that other manufacturers haven't followed. Design wise it's just a big black box but it can be easily hidden away out of sight. Like the entire lineup of high-end Samsung TVs, the Q90R is provided with two remote controls. There's one black plastic affair with a multitude of buttons for quick access and a silver metal controller with very few buttons indeed. Looking at the black remote first and this may be best suited to those who like to tinker with settings on a regular basis as it has a direct access key to those, as well as someone who likes big buttons and a traditional style remote controller. It's light and plastic but it does get the job done and it has everything you would want out of a remote control. The second all metal affair is the One Controller which has very few keys and uses a touch sensitive directional pad and middle enter key for the majority of its use. You will have to enter via the home button but from there everything is easy to find in the scroll bar of the smart TV system including settings. You also have direct access keys for the gallery voice control with Bixby play and pause and home keys along with the back button and two toggle switches for volume and channel. Pressing the volume key also mutes the TV. 
New on the 2019 One controller is direct access keys for Netflix, Rakuten and Prime Video. The Samsung Tizen Smart TV system is still one of the very best and most intuitive ways to navigate and select sources on the TV. The launcher bar and two level display gives you enough information to make choices in what you want to watch with every major streaming and catch up service available, many with previews of what is available to watch in the second layer of the bar. Moving to the left gives you access to the gallery, sources, settings and apps and it really is an intuitive system to use with added benefits such as Samsung's content discovery system and a number of pay per view options for UHD and HDR films. Amazon is also now fully HDR10 Plus compatible and the Q90R will also now display that it's receiving a full HDR10 dynamic metadata signal in the launcher bar. The menu system on the Q90R is very comprehensive and offers just about everything you could possibly want to set the picture, sound and more. The menus here on video have been set with a low backlight so the exposure on the camera is correct and these are not calibrated settings. We found the menu system in Smart TV operations to be fast and stable with no issues of slowing down or crashing. We are given four picture mode selections which seems about right for a consumer TV and with the movie setting we would expect Samsung to produce the most accurate image quality in this picture mode. After setting the picture mode we can move to the expert settings and again these are not calibrated settings. Having selected the movie picture mode some options in this expert selection will change between SDR and HDR signals. These do not interfere with each other so you have a separate setting for HDR and SDR images in here. The main areas of difference are the gamma settings where ST2084 is a PQ EOTF setting for HDR content and it changes to either BT1886 or 2.2 for SDR content with 2.2 best suited to bright viewing rooms. Other subjects of note are the Auto Motion Plus settings where we found to be flexible enough to suit most users and provide excellent motion for nearly all types of content. For 24 frames per second material it's best left in the off or minimum custom settings where there's no soap opera effect from frame interpolation and the pull down is correct. LED clear motion is the black frame insertion process and this does work but added in visible flickering which might be too much for some users to watch over a long period of time. We also noted slight frame interpolation is added and this can't be defeated here in the black frame insertion mode. Adding too much frame interpolation when setting up the custom mode or using auto will also add in more artifacts in the image, something which you really should bear in mind if you are going to add in interpolation when watching fast sports like football. There are also some slight issues with micro stuttering when using an off-board TV tuner or box. For gamers there are also a number of features that can be switched on within the game menu. Here you can set the TV in low latency mode as well as turning on the FreeSync VRR if you're using an Xbox One X like we are here. There's also the dynamic black equalizer which is a gamma manipulation tool that lightens the shadows and makes it easier to cheat. In most cases when the Q90R detects a games console loading a game it will switch to the games mode. If you use your console to watch a movie it will go back to your default movie settings. One of the main features of the Q90R over the outgoing Q9FN is the ability to improve viewing angles and screen reflections using a new improved black filter. As you can see here with the TV switched off and opposite a window position, the Q90R handles the reflections far better with a matte like texture to light reflections. You can however also see some stripping vertically down the screen and we've had this confirmed that this is caused by the wide viewing filter. Good positioning of the Q90R provides an excellent non-reflective surface and when watching content the light rejection also helps improve contrast and black level performance. The RGB striping can still be seen when images are on screen if the TV is left in a position with a strong light source opposite or even directly to the side. 
The viewing angles on the Q90R are its party piece for this year, and as you can see, black levels, contrast and colours hold up extremely well when viewed from off-axis positions when compared to the Q9FN here. This is achieved by focusing the LED backlight through the wide angle filter so there's no immediate drop off in contrast blacks and colours and unlike the Sony ZF9 that had a distinct drop off in contrast performance due to its filter, we've no such issues here with the Q90R which remains an excellent performer when it comes to contrast. We'll compare it to the Q9FN and LG CA OLED later in the review. Moving to the Q90R from the recently reviewed Q900R 8K TV is a new 4K quantum processor with its 4K upscaling engine and other advanced features such as adaptive brightness, adaptive sound and adaptive volume. This also builds up information on how you use the TV to make the experience better. Finally, the local dimming promises to offer better algorithm performance which will show up more shadow detail and more consistent image brightness but retaining a strong contrast performance and adaptive dynamic HDR tone mapping for static metadata content. We used the movie picture preset to measure the SDR and out of the box the Samsung Q90R is really quite accurate when it comes to grayscale tracking and gamma. Indeed the Delta E errors are reasonable and just slightly over the threshold of 3, resulting in a slightly warm yellowish tint to brighter aspects of the image. Gamma also tracks well and despite there being a dark rise at 10 and 20% stimulus, this is caused by the local dimming not keeping up with the meter taking the measurements, so it's not of a concern to us here. And moving to HD Rec 709 colour gamut, we can see the slight yellow tint for the white point in the centre of the graph and as you can see this slightly pulls the gamut tracking towards yellow. Otherwise the colour gamut tracking result is actually very accurate for an out of the box setting and if you're not planning on paying for a calibration, the image quality here is very good for an out of the box preset that gets fairly accurate in the end. We doubt the vast majority of viewers would actually tell the difference without a reference point being next to it to compare with. But can we get this image quality even more accurate? Well, we have the calibration controls within the TV menus for 2 point and 20 point grayscale as well as a colour management system for colour gamut correction. We started by correcting the grayscale and now have reference level results for the Samsung using the 20 point process. Tracking is spot on with delta errors now well under 1 and invisible to the eye, with just the same issue with the gamma and local dimming that we had with out of the box results, which doesn't concern us at all. By correcting the grayscale, we also correct the tracking points for the Rec 709 saturation tracking, with only 75% red proving to be an issue. Elsewhere, we are very happy with the results, which again give us a reference image for SDR content. Moving to HDR, we find the movie mode in HDR out of the box tracks the PQ EOTF in two different ways depending on the metadata it receives. In both cases, this is above the line, so slightly brighter than it should be to follow the PQ EOTF standard. First of all, with 1000 nit metadata, we can see that the tracking is a little bit on the bright side for the majority of the track from black to peak white. We can also see that there is very little tone mapping going on, with a hard clip well above Above the 1000 nit point. This means that there will be no clipping of highlight detail with 1000 nit content. With 4000 nit content there is some slight clipping taking place as the PQ EOTF rolls off its tone mapping to try and keep a consistent APL and try not to lose peak highlight details. Again the tracking is on the slightly bright side of the standard and Samsung are perfectly aware of this when we asked. They responded in our request that in studies consumers prefer this type of tracking and tone mapping and as such they've included it here. There's no major image issues highlighted other than things from black to peak white are slightly brighter than they should be. However, we have requested that in movie mode Samsung should follow the standards with the tone mapping and PQ EOTF tracking with the dynamic tone mapping for static metadata signals. In the other three modes, they can apply the images their test consumers found pleasing and for video files, they keep them happy with an accurate movie mode measurement. We've passed this over to Samsung and we'll wait to see if they'll take us up on that. It is possible to get a calibrated image and graph by clicking the contrast down four clicks, as you can see here with correct tracking of the PQ EOTF, so Samsung should have no issue implementing that for their image purists in the movie mode, or you can do it yourself by just clicking four clicks down on contrast. 
obviously what we can accurately measure is the actual in-image performance with the dynamic tone mapping that cannot be defeated. But after spending weeks watching the set with HDR content we're familiar with, there's nothing untoward going on within its images that makes it look too different from any other HDR set. In terms of image accuracy for SDR, the Samsung Q90R is excellent when set up correctly out of the box and even better when it's calibrated. In HDR we also don't have any major issues with the measured performance apart from the slight PQ EOTF brightness which we hope will be fixed by Samsung in the movie mode out of the box. And of course this can already be fixed as it stands by using a slight contrast adjustment. We did a lot of comparison testing between a 55 inch Q9FN next to the 65 inch Q90R in the same room with both sets calibrated. We also introduced further side by side testing with an LG 55 inch CA OLED TV and used well known movie sequences as well as normal TV viewing over a few weeks to establish just what differences there are and where the Q90R excels. Thankfully the introduction of the wide viewing angle filter has not impacted on the black levels or contrast performance available from the Q90R like it did with the Sony ZF9. It is slightly down in measurement terms against the Q9FN but both sets use different local dimming algorithms and as such produce slightly different image results. But this is never at the expense of deep blacks and excellent shadow detailing from the Q90R. The Q9FN is just a little deeper in the blacks and a bit more aggressive with its dimming, but also slightly lacking in the overall mid-tones compared to the Q90R. When they're actually side by side in the same room with the same content, there are no major issues that jump out at you when it comes to the interesting contrast performance or feel that the blacks are lacking on the Q90R. They are just achieving the same results through slightly different means. We also didn't notice the local dimming doing anything odd in the three weeks of intense testing we put it through. It is well controlled and it never makes itself known during normal use. We also didn't notice any issues with intense blooming or haloing during dark scenes. Only subtitle use in darker content might be an issue for some viewers and should be something you demo before a purchase if this is important to you. We did notice that the Q90R has a more aggressive halo and blooming suppression algorithm compared to the Q9FN which is more prone to just clip blacks and allow blooming artifacts to be seen with bright objects against dark backgrounds. We found the Q90R to be very effective at suppressing such issues but it does do this by reducing the brightness of the bright object slightly which with some content can actually be noticeable. You can see it here with the rectangle getting much brighter once it reaches the 10% mark and is compressed before that from 1% to 9%. There are always going to be compromises with issues like blooming and I personally don't see it as a real deal breaker but you need to know it is there. With black bars for scope movies and dramas as well as aspect ratios used by the likes of Netflix there are no issues with light pollution, the black bars remain black throughout. And the Q9FN just can't cope with the reflections and the wide viewing angles that the Q90R can produce. It's here that the main differences are seen and if you want the added benefits of the wider viewing angles and a matte like screen effect with reflections, the Q90R wins hands down here. Even when put up against the LG C8, the Q90R is impressive with its image performance and it can hold its own to a certain degree. There is no such thing as a perfect TV and we can see the compromises being made between the two Samsung models and also against the OLED. But what does stand out is just how far LCD technology has come thanks to Samsung's dogged attitude to stick with the technology and make it perform as well as it does now. It provides a definite different choice for those who don't feel OLED TVs are for them. Be it due to fears of image retention or the lack of brightness for HDR, there are now quality choices for consumers to make depending on their needs and the environments. 
The Q90R provides extremely accurate images with SDR and HDR content with excellent peak brightnesses of those specular highlights and decent black levels and shadow detail. Motion is also strong and while colours are not as intense as the Q9FN in comparison, they are also not washed out in any way that would put off genuinely interested video files. If you want strong blacks at the sacrifice of some shadow detail as well as strong colours, the Q9FN is the choice to make. However, if you want a smidge more accuracy, very good black levels with excellent shadow details and midtones, and with less neon looking colours, the Q90R is a more rounded set between the two. Gaming is also a high point for the Q90R with excellent input lag of just 16.2 milliseconds and the added benefits for Xbox users with FreeSync VRR, although we're not sure about the gamma lifting in the shadows, this just feels like cheating to us. Given the side-by-side -side testing we've performed and living with the Q90R, there's no doubt that it competes at a very high level with the compromises it has to make in the same way as an OLED has to compromise against its own weak points. There are use cases for each of the TVs being tested and there's no doubt that Q90R produces some really compelling images that were unthinkable for an LED LCD TV just a few years ago. The tech really has come on and the Q90R is probably the best all-round LCD TV we've tested to this point. Once again, Samsung has managed to make one of the best LCD TVs available to buy on the market. It's added meaningful features like the quantum processor for 4K upscaling that's very good indeed. And the wide angle technology with the black screen filter is excellent and really expands the usefulness of a VA LCD panel in a normal living room conditions. The local dimming is also very clever and another step up on previous models in being able to give a more consistent image, especially with shadow details and midtones. While the contrast is not as deep as the Q9FN, the Q90R is more subtle and accurate with its image attributes to the standards, especially in SDR mode. We would obviously like Samsung to change the PQ EOTF settings in the movie mode to keep image purists happy and add the slightly bright curve to the other picture modes that normal users are more likely to pick anyway as they like the bluer, brighter looking image that those types of settings provide. By doing that, it would keep all the possible users happy. The Q90R is bright, colourful and an excellent HDR performer, which makes the lack of Dolby Vision all the more apparent here. Plenty of other TV makers are including both HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision to their TVs in 2019, which gives the consumer the choice. Samsung should really follow suit here or risk losing some custom from those consumers who box tick when it comes to buying a new TV. And when it comes to value for money, the Q90R when compared to the competition does still feel a little bit expensive. But in LCD TV terms, the Samsung Q90R is the best all-round LED LCD TV that they have yet produced with an excellent user interface, superb smart TV system with every major app and catch-up service available, an excellent design and the One Connect box also add to the appeal and image quality with the new AI algorithms for local dimming, the wide angles also look great, there's strong blacks with excellent shadows and midtones along with effective blooming suppression all create a very compelling TV for 2019 and one that we think is best in its class. If you'd like to see more videos like this then please like and subscribe and why not click the notification bell to find out when our next review is available.